tonight, a major police pursuit leaves a man facing court and a ballot on a proposed nuclear waste facility expected near year's end. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with Louise Hedger begins now. Good evening. A man has been charged after leading authorities on a dramatic police chase in the early hours of this morning. The incident unfolded in Wyala with the 26-year-old allegedly hooning through the local caravan park and ended when he crashed the vehicle into a pole. A dramatic police chase in the early hours of this morning came to a crashing end with this smash vehicle the aftermath. The pursuit started just before two o'clock when police tried to stop a Subaru Forester on Winton Street and when it didn't stop the chase carried on to the west of town and into scrubland. Authorities losing sight until it was again spotted on Malaquana Road and then in the Wyala Caravan Park. Road spikes were deployed, causing two tyres to blow before the driver collided the car into a pole. The driver, a 26-year-old man from Wyala Norrie, attempted to run away but was chased down by police on foot. The dog unit called in for support. A police German Shepherd was tasked to assist. However, fortunately for the man, officers got to him before the dog did. The man was charged with aggravated driving to escape police pursuit and driving whilst disqualified, but today didn't enter a plea. The 26-year-old Wayala Nori man remains in custody after facing the Elizabeth Magistrates Court by video link today. He's expected to appear in court again next week. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Patrols in Port Lincoln last night arrested a 27-year-old man allegedly caught driving a stolen vehicle. Crews spotted the sedan just after 6.30 and after he failed to pull over, they undertook a short pursuit. The car was dumped on King Street while the driver fled on foot. Police eventually tracked him down where he was arrested and was refused police bail. Federal Resources Minister Matt Canavan has faced a grilling by Hawker residents about a proposed nuclear waste facility. After delays due to legal action, the minister expects a ballot will be held on the issue by the end of this year. It's an issue that's consumed and divided the people of Hawker for six years. Now locals have had enough and they're demanding action. We're going to get it on the front foot, get the voting done and, and so that either way we can understand where we stand then. The nuclear waste conversation revisiting an old chapter yesterday. The federal government meeting with the Far North community to talk about reopening a community ballot on the proposed facility, which was suspended 12 months ago due to legal action. I'm hopeful that we could have ballots uh, completed this year. Kimber Council has announced it will commence voting from the beginning of October, but it's unclear when Flinders Ranges residents will get their say. Resources Minister Matt Canavan says while the vote is an important part of the process, there are other factors that will help determine whether the community supports the plan. We're also taking into account neighbouring landholders, the interests of Indigenous communities, uh, agricultural communities. The tension and division in Hawker is clear, with some questions at the meeting met with jeers from opposing opinions. There'll be identified hey, come on. Uh, of the Aboriginal workers. Some have issues about building the facility on sacred Aboriginal land. I think the Adnamatna people here um, haven't had their voices heard. There's still a lot of concern within our community. While others think the economic benefits for the town are too hard to ignore. 45 jobs when it's established. But I think there's going to be tourist opportunities out of this. Same as Lucas Heights. The federal government says it will continue to support both Kimber and Hawker beyond the decision on the nuclear waste facility and hasn't ruled out future financial benefits to the unsuccessful town. We realise it's been difficult for some uh, and we'll be repaying that with the full commitment of the Australian government over time. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. The New South Wales Labor Party is calling on the state government to promise no essential energy jobs will be cut before the end of the year. It comes after the electricity provider revealed plans to slash 180 jobs across the state. Patrick Reinke has the story. With the jobs of almost 200 essential energy workers hanging in the balance, the state government this week successfully negotiated a halt to any job cuts. 
The state-owned power supplies plan to axe 180 regional jobs which may involve Broken Hill was put on hold. But Labor says that's not good enough, demanding a commitment that essential energy workers in western New South Wales will still have a job by Christmas. The last thing we can afford is for the government in these government jobs not to be protecting them. Uh, we cannot afford to lose any regional and rural jobs. The Deputy Premier didn't mince words today, saying in a statement that the government doesn't care what Labor thinks, that they're there for the workers. Accusing Labor of causing anxiety for regional communities, while the state government is working to save almost 200 jobs. Essential Energy says it's working on improving efficiencies and considering alternative options for savings that don't result in job cuts. When the review is finalised, Essential Energy will report to the state government. Former Nationals Party leader and Deputy Prime Minister Tim Fisher has died aged 73. Before serving as Deputy PM under John Howard, he was the MP for the Federal Electorate of Farrah from 1984 to 2001. Brogan Hill used to be part of the electorate before joining Parks. Fisher played a big role in reforming Australia's gun laws. Community groups in regional New South Wales are being encouraged to apply for funding as part of a program which aims to promote road safety. Grants of up to $30,000 are available through the Community Road Safety Program, which aims to foster ideas from community members about how to reduce the state's road toll. Two-thirds of all fatalities occur on regional roads. Applications close in September. Organisers of the Air Peninsula's Mortlock Shield say changes need to happen in order for the festival to survive. Several key suggestions outlined in a report launched into the carnival's finances. It's one of Australia's longest running football carnivals, but the Mortlock Shield's future is in doubt if changes don't happen soon. We actually need to address some of these issues and make sure we have a future for some of these events. The Air Peninsula Football Council launching an investigation into the carnival's finances, publishing its findings in a 25-page report identifying 57 recommendations. Without a profit, the, the event doesn't happen. Uh, it's got to maintain sustainability. Uh, so that is the number one factor. One option would see the carnival move out of Port Lincoln to Woodna, saving thousands on accommodation. Shifted it to, say, Woodna, then it would cut out the accommodation subsidy because all teams could travel uh, to the event and travel home. A final report will be presented to the Morlock Shield Committee in November. That's when the uh, leagues get together and so they will look at the recommendations from the working party uh, and which hopefully will have the recommendations they want to implement and some time frames around that. The council hoping to implement changes as soon as possible in an attempt to save this iconic carnival. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, the second day of a major industry conference in Port Pirie and hundreds of items up for grabs in Broken Hill. Welcome back. Businesses across regional South Australia are capitalising on a new push from big mining companies to utilise local services. Some say it's led to a double in profits in the space of just 12 months. As one of the only hydraulic specialists in the Roxby Downs region, John Stevens' business suddenly realised it offered something many mining companies were crying out for. Uh, basically we were able to take uh, dirty oil, which is in the equipment, on site. Um, and, and filter that down and get more efficiency out of the machines. Its services were quickly snapped up in the mines, securing the future for the 13 workers and sending profits skyrocketing. It makes us a bit more sellable, uh, makes us a bit more credible. It's a similar story for air trading. The industrial supply business trucks its tools all over the Air Peninsula and has now caught the eye of Oz Minerals. When you get these big orders from the larger companies uh, that, that are committed to dealing with small local businesses, it uh, just makes it more sustainable, gives you confidence to invest. And the Chamber of Commerce says it's important to see the contracting trend shift towards local services. That's what brings health and wealth to regions, is when the local companies are employed by the bigger companies. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Hundreds of items will be up for grabs during a clearing sale auction this Saturday in Broken Hill. A local real estate agent is hoping for a large turnout, with items ranging from basketball cards to furniture all going under the hammer.
all going under the hammer. It will only take us probably about two hours to um, conduct on Saturday as it's all catalogued and ready to go and we hope to hold these on a bi-monthly or even a quarterly basis in Broken Hill. The last time Broken Hill Real Estate held a clearing house auction, close to 400 people attended with 380 lots auctioned off. This weekend they're doing it all again. Instead of having a garage sale they can drop their goods into us and we can auction them off because that way we can control the price and control who comes in the front doors. In their Crystal Street offices, 280 lots will be put up for bid. Clifford's saying there's something for everyone. From basketball cards to classic Coca-Cola bottles, from furniture to fine china and retro tennis rackets. Garage Nalia, which is um, Castrol um, bottles with the uh, tin lids, uh, enamel signs, uh, bric-a-brac, china, it, it just goes on. The auction house is open for those interested in a sneak peek. There's still time to register. Doors open at 8 o'clock with the first lot taking bids at 9.30. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. More tourists are visiting the Tumby Bay area according to new data and it's said to be the Colour Tumby Festival which is said to be the major drawcard in attracting visitors to the eastern town. It's one of the biggest festivals in the Air Peninsula's calendar and Colour Tumby Festival attracts tourists from around the world. The visitor economy in Tumby Bay is growing. Uh, and it's growing quite well. The town's council adopting spend tracking software, the system monitoring FPOS transactions and tourist numbers. The program switched on earlier this year, identifying a spike in tourists in April during Kalatumbi. What it's doing is corroborating the anecdotal evidence we've had from business. So we're reporting a 20 to 25 percent upturn in business. The spend map data is giving hard facts that that is in fact what's happening. During April, visitor spend was up nearly 25% from last year, the town making over $1 million during the month. What was spent in the town covered what was spent on running the festival, so you know, that's a tremendous return on investment. The Progress Association says it's wanting to continue using the software, with five other towns already adopting the system. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Ten Broken Hill firefighters have received commendations for their services and courage during a dangerous rescue operation last year. In June, a father and his two sons passed out in an underground cellar after being overcome by carbon monoxide fumes. Firefighters from both local stations went into the area to recover the family, but sadly they couldn't be revived. The recipients were honoured in a ceremony at the Broken Hill Civic Centre. The UniSA Wyala campus is throwing open its doors this Sunday for an open day. The regional manager says it's an opportunity for those interested to learn about study options. All of our programs, including our online and, and Adelaide programs as well, so even if, even if you're not considering studying at Wyala campus, I'd, I'd encourage anyone to come along. And... The open day will be running from 11 till 3. Stay with us coming up after the break. We'll have this week's fish and tips and the weather details with Brit. Hello again. Now for this week's fish and tips, let's hear from the experts. Welcome another week around the golf fishing tips. Doesn't quite look like I'm dressed for it at the moment, but I tell you what, this weekend, look out. It's a time to get out there to King George Whiting. We have to head, head over towards Eastern Shoal. You'll find yourself some nice ones. What I've found as well is a few small snapper floating around the place in the creeks. So if you want to have a little bit of a burly up, you might be able to get yourself a good feed of those. Again, don't forget the salmon. There's a lot of those in the second creek area. Go up in the shallows and just wait for the runoff and you should be able to go pretty well with those. But remember, take a kid fishing. It's good fun. See you next week. G'day and welcome to this week's Fish and Tips reports from Port Augusta, Jewel North. Well, the season's starting to change now. The wildflowers are coming out and it's starting to get a little bit warmer. So uh, now would be a time to target the King George Whiting uh, over in the Flinders Channel. And just try it a little bit deeper, sort of about half an hour to the top of the tide and also half an hour after the tide as well. Squid's still getting caught uh, over in the middle banks and also along the shacks as you would, but they'll start to thin out now. And again, we've had some reports of a big flatter getting caught uh, up in the shallower banks around Port Patterson and also some salmon trolling in around there as well. That's all we have from the Jewel in the North. 
Higher whalers fishing report this week. Things have certainly been a little bit better this week opposed to last week. There's been some good land-based reports coming in along the foreshore. Been some nice yellowfin whiting, a few salmon trout and also a few mullet. A little bit further south down towards Cowlitz Landing, the same species have been coming in. For the boat anglers, the whiting is starting to heat up. They're getting a little bit thicker. Out front of Mount Young definitely work. The, gr the deeper grounds have been the best options. And snapper again, the further the south you go, the better it's been. A lot of fish there in the one to four kilo size bracket. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. Well locally the squid have been pretty slow in our bays um, uh, but there have been some squid up at Louth Bay and they've been reasonably good size as well. Um, same deal, widening a little bit patchy in our bay um, uh, but outside of the bay from uh, Carcass Rock down to Taylor's there have been some uh, reasonable catches of widening and there's plenty of red mullet mixed in with them. Up along Port Lincoln's uh, North Shore from the Lions Park up to uh, North Shields there have been some little patches of salmon cruising along. Up at Cow, there's been some uh, yellowfin whiting, um, and over at Farm Beach, um, uh, the uh, King George have been uh, um, whiting pretty well over the past week. Well, that's all for fishing tips this week. We'll see you again with more tips next week. Now for a look at what's happening in the weather, here's Britt Aylin. Thanks, Louise, and good evening. It's been a fine and partly cloudy day across the Gulf. Port Augusta reached a top of 18 degrees, Broken Hill 17, Wyala and Port Perry 16, Port Lincoln and Adelaide both 15 degrees today. From the satellite we can see that low cloud lingering about the region. Looking ahead to tomorrow now, on the waters, northerly winds tending northeasterly at up to 20 knots with seas at 1 metre and the sun will rise just after 10 to 7 in the morning. It's looking to be a mostly sunny day with a little bit of cloud over the eastern air peninsula. Port Augusta and Woodna looking at tops of 23 degrees, Wyala 22, Cleve 21, Corn and Port Pirie both 20, 19 the lucky number for Port Lincoln, Coffin Bay, Broken Hill and Kadena, Adelaide 18, Clare 17. To the weekend, Port Lincoln expecting showers on Saturday with cloudy conditions on Sunday. Much the same at Cleve, Woodna, fine and partly cloudy on Saturday, Sunday with a little more cloud cover. Wyala and Port Augusta both looking partly cloudy across the weekend. Showers expected at Kadena on Saturday with cloudy conditions on Sunday. Port Piri partly cloudy through the weekend. Clare with showers on Saturday, cloud cover on Sunday. And finally to Broken Hill with sunny conditions expected on Saturday, looking partly cloudy on Sunday. And with that, Louise, it's back to you. All right, thank you for that, Britt. And that's your local news this Thursday evening. Thank you for joining us today. We'll have updates later, but until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.